So I only started working on this topic uh, recently. So this talk will mainly be based on some previous studies and also our recent uh, experiment work. And I, I want to firstly classify the life elements by uh, into two categories. First is that the, the molecules that build the life, which include the nutrients, salinity, biomolecules, and the biofunctional metals. And then uh, uh, these this, uh, uh, molecules to build, uh, build the life. And another category is the met metabolism substrates, which can pro provide energy for the life to uh, um, for the metabolism of the life, which include the gases, inorganics, and organics, and uh, minerals. So in this talk, I will mainly base, uh, focus on the, uh, these uh, compounds and also the geologically abundant minerals. So because the theme of this session and also my talk is about the surface absorption, so I want to uh, firstly uh, emphasize the importance of the surface absorption to you. And the first one is to protect the biomolecules against the harsh environments on the early Earth or other planets. For example, here, th this study uh, shows the degradation of the DNA uh, without the mineral and with mineral. So uh, from this figure, you can see that uh, it's, it is quite obvious that uh, the complexation between the clay mineral and also DNA can help Preserve, uh, preserve the DNA against uh, the damage of the UV radiation. So this is uh, very relevant uh, with the early Earth environment because there's no ozone and the UV radiation will be very harsh for the early life. And uh, the second uh, importance is to concentrate and polymerize the biomolecules on the surface uh, of the uh, uh, minerals. Uh, in this example, the, uh, the people used uh, numerical uh, simulations, uh, mechanical quantum uh, simulations to study the absorption of the peptide and amino acid onto the uh, double layer hydroxide minerals. And uh, the, the results is quite interesting but difficult to show. But this, this illustration shows the basic uh, conclusion of the study is that the absorption will redistribute the, char uh, the charge of the amino acid and activate the carboxyl group in order to facilitate the, uh, uh, com the polymerization of the amino acid. And uh, more interesting is that the, uh, after the polymerization, the, the complexation strength of the peptide onto the mineral surface changed, and it, it will allow the removal of the peptide after the uh, after the polymerization, which is very important for the uh, early complexation of the life. And there are also other important uh, uh, effects of the surface uh, absorption. For example, here in this example, the, the people studied the reduction of the carbon dioxide uh, with uh, chromium oxide or without chromium oxide. You can see that uh, when you add the chromium oxide, it can, it can facilitate the re reaction uh, quite rapidly, so which will, uh, which will reduce the, the carbon dioxide for the early, um, for the early uh, synthesis. And in this example, uh, people studied the, the weathering of the basalt without, uh, with uh, organic ligand and not without organic ligand. You can see that uh, with organic ligand, probably by the surface complexation, uh, the release of the phosphorus and the copper is, uh, is quite uh, um, significant compared with uh, without uh, uh, the ligand. So the surface complexation reaction involves several uh, important uh, processes, including the speciation of the surface sites and also absorbance and also the site absorbent the complexation reaction, for example, this reaction, and also the electrostatic interaction. So uh, all these processes are affected by a lot of uh, different uh, prim uh, factors, including the type of the mineral surface, the type, of, uh, the type of the absorbent, and also ionic strength, pH, salinity, and temperature and pressure. Among these factors, all these, uh, pr uh, all these factors except temperature and pressure 
are studied uh, again and again, but uh, the temperature and the pressure are not, uh, well, uh, are not well understood yet. So that's why I want to uh, focus on this study. And uh, the, uh, another reason is that the temperature and the pressure condition on the early Earth uh, show that there is a large gradient of the temperature from the hydrothermal uh, uh, fluid which can reach up to 400 degrees C and the, the, the surface temperature which uh, is uh, very controversial. Uh, studies showing that maybe it's below zero degrees C or it's uh, less than 100 degrees C. Uh, and, and, and also a large, in, large gradient of the pressure from uh, less than 1,000 bars to about one bar. So uh, this, large ingre this large gradient of the temperature and the pressure uh, showing that the, the complexation under this large gradient is critical for the habitability of the early Earth. So here is one uh, uh, example of the uh, uh, absorption of the ga gas onto the mineral surface. The x-axis is the pressure, and the y-axis is the, uh, uh, the amount of the gas absorbed. And uh, th this shows also three temperature uh, cases. You can see that with the uh, uh, same pressure, increasing temperature will release the gas from the surface. Uh, which is very uh, easy to understand is that uh, the increasing temperature will activate the, the will make the gas more active, uh, more um, more active, and will uh, remove from the mineral surface. And the increasing pressure will uh, greatly increase the absorption. That's because the uh, the surface absorption of the gas is a um, is a volume decrease. Uh, uh, process and the increasing pressure will uh, will increase the absorption. And this is a study uh, about the absorption of the zinc onto the uh, grotite at various uh, temperatures uh, between 10 degrees C and 70 degrees C and the two pH. Uh, the left is more acidic and the right is more alkaline. You can see that in both cases, increasing the temperature are greatly uh, elevated the absorption of the zinc onto the grotite. This is mainly because the absorption of the zinc onto the grotite is, uh, is a taking energy. Uh, so when you increase the temperature, uh, the, the, the temperature increase will favor the absorption uh, equilibrium to favor more absorption. And uh, uh, here I want, uh, is an, uh, another example about the absorption of the phosphate onto the uh, colonite. I can't find the, it's, it's, quite, a, um, uh, it's quite shocking that uh, not so many people focus on this uh, problem. And uh, I only find a very ancient study about this, about this problem. And, uh, uh, but, but apparently you can see from the two degrees C to 40 degrees C, increasing temperature will uh, greatly elevate the absorption of the phosphate, which has very important uh, implications for the availability of the phosphate on the early Earth's uh, ocean or on the other exoplanets. And uh, there, are, there are many, uh, compared with the inorganics, there are not so many studies on the absorption of the organics. Here I showed uh, just uh, several available cases. Um, and this one uh, studied the absorption of the adenine onto the graphite. You can see that uh, increasing the temperature from 30 degrees C to 60 will uh, decrease the absorption of the adenine, which may uh, maybe because of the, uh, the, 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 the change of the, the pi pi interaction and also the hydrogen bond between the adenine and the graphite surface. There, here is another study uh, 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 which investigated the absorption of the oxalic acid onto the rutile surface. You, uh, this is a very uh, uh, wide range of the temperature studied and also the very uh, wide pH studied. But there is no uh, systematic change of the absorption uh, related uh, uh, with the temperature change. So, so here's the, we also uh, recently do some, uh, conducted some experiments uh, 
to study the absorption of the nucleotides onto the neutronite. So we basically put uh, uh, mix some mineral suspension and also nucleotide solution, and then put it into this uh, very special tube, which can endure less than 100 degrees C and also one 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 thousand uh, bars. And we seal it and put it into the water, uh, put it into the reactor, and use the water to increase the temperature and the pressure to the target uh, values. And then after 24 hours, we assume that it is in equilibrium, and then we quench cool the system and pull the, uh, get the tubes out and centrifuge the sample and analyze it, uh, analyze the supernatin using the UV spectroscopy and got the, uh, got the um, solution, uh, the concentration of the nucleotides nucleotide after absorption. So here's the result. The X axis is the equilibrium concentration of the nucleotides after absorption, and the Y is the, uh, the, the amount of the uh, absorption of the nucleotides. And you can see that uh, uh, with, the P, uh, with the temperature uh, change from 25 degrees C to 70 degrees C, and also pressure to one bar to one thousand bars, there's no a big change of the absorption. Although there's maybe a slightly uh, change of the absorption, but uh, given the large error bar, maybe that's uh, that's under the um, that's within the systematic uh, uncertainty. Uh, the pre previous results seems boring, but when when we add some like trace amount of uh, transition metals, for example, zinc chloride into the system. It, it showed very interesting results that uh, the addition of the transition metals, which is enriched in the modern hydrothermal fluid, uh, can greatly elevate the absorption of the, of the nucleotides onto the mineral surface, uh, which is very relevant with the, with the, early, with the early Earth uh, system and also the modern exoplanets. So here is uh, uh, a conclusion is that the temperature and the pressure affects greatly the surface absorption of the left elements onto the mineral surface. But uh, please note that I didn't show any uh, different system may behave quite differently. So there's no general rules uh, proposed here. So um, um, and th this, these results may have very uh, uh, important uh, implications for the, for the origin and the evolution of the life on the early Earth and also exoplanets. For example, uh, it may affect the, the assembling of the, the first life by different, uh, you know, the uh, different behavior of the, uh, of the absorption of the materials onto the metal surface under different uh, temperature and pressure conditions. Given that uh, we propose hydrothermal system is one uh, cradle of the first life. And also, it will greatly affect the availability of the materials for the primitive life and also habitability of the other planets. For example, the phosphate, the nit nitrate, uh, ammonium, and also other um, uh, sulfur. And also, for, for example, uh, the absorption onto the mineral surface may change the gas to the aqueous equilibrium reaction which is currently uh, poorly unknown. And uh, I, th I think uh, um, uh, it's worth to investigate in the future. And so uh, I want to acknowledge in the, uh, finally my collaborators and the colleagues and also my funding, uh, funding uh, sources. So thank you. We have time for one quick question. This is a very good question. So we also uh, uh, investigate uh, this uh, phenomenon, uh, observe this phenomenon in under the ambient conditions. And also our collaborator also used another transition metal, uh, divalent iron, uh, and also, also showed this uh, um, uh, elevating absorption 
uh, phenomenon. Uh, what we think is that uh, uh, there, there are several possible mechanisms. First is that the, the absorption of the zinc, which is very strong, may change the surface charge of the mineral. Surf, uh, of the mineral. And another is that uh, absorption of the zinc can, can induce the surface precipitation of the, for example, zinc uh, hydroxide, which will change the surface property of the, of the, uh, of the, of the clay. And also, there, um, probably the complexation of the zinc with the nucleotide can also, uh, can also affect this, uh, proce pro uh, this process. So uh, I think with more, we need to use some more advanced uh, facili uh, facility to, uh, to really know which mechanism is dominant or is a combination uh, effect. But thank you. Thank the speaker again.